Hi there, my name is Marina Newington and I help entrepreneurial women do more in less time. And today I wanna to talk to you about why New Year's resolutions don't stick. Now, I could have started this by saying Happy New Year, but it's the 20th of, oh, it's actually the 21st of January as I uh, say this. And, um, you know, it's time to stop saying Happy New Year and it's time to start reflecting on these New Year's resolutions. Now, I have a statistic for you. Do you know that by February, 65% of all New Year's resolutions have been abandoned? Right? That's a lot. 65%. So 21 days ago, we had great intentions. We said, this is the beginning of a new year. This year is going to be different. 2021, finally, 2020 is over. And come February, that's um, less than two weeks from now, 65% of those have been abandoned. Now, what I would like to talk to you about today is how we are going to fix that. I'm going to pinpoint the seven problems that people have when they set their resolutions, and I'm going to give you seven solutions to fix those problems so that your resolutions will stick, and that this year, the goals that you set and the aspirations that you have will count, will matter, and will move you forward because that is what I want for you, my friend. Now stick around to the end also because I have an amazing free cheat sheet for you of these seven problems and solutions that you can download so you can keep um, and refer to whenever you want to make sure that your New Year's resolutions really stick. Okay, so shall we dive in? Number one, um, okay, most, resolution, blah, most resolutions are based on what you should do rather than what you actually want, right? So you have things like, I should go to the gym, I should start running, um, I should lose weight, I should stop smoking. Should is not very inspirational and should is not very motivational. Okay, the solution here is to really check in and see if this is something that you want to be doing. Is this something that is important to you? Is this something that is meaningful to you? If you pick a resolution that is meaningful to you, then you are more likely to stick to it as opposed to something that you feel like you should do. What's something that you really want to change? Think about that, try to reframe it. Okay, number two, is um oh this is this is huge okay most resolutions are just too general i talk about this all the time with setting goals um i'll put in a vlog um a link to my vlog goals are your number one asset um you have to be specific okay people are just too general i want to get healthy i want to lose weight i want to go to the gym I want to stop smoking. I want to make more money in my business. Um, what was it? My my husband had one. Um, I'm um, dobbing him in here. He said, I want to stop procrastinating. I was like, that's not a resolution. He's like, yes, it is. I'm like, no, you have to be specific. Okay, you need to reframe this. If you want to see some results, if you don't want to give up, you need to turn it around. So I want to get healthy. How about... I am going to start running on Tuesdays and Sundays for five minutes. Now that is something specific, right? That is something that you know that you, exactly what it means, you know what you're gonna do. So get specific with your resolutions. Do not leave them broad, okay? I have, my big resolution was that I am turning 50 in July. Did you know 50 could look so good? I know, stop. But I'm turning 50 in July and I've just put on so much weight. This Corona thing has not helped me. I've been trying to lose the same 20 pounds for ages. I'm losing them, it is done. So I have a specific goal. My specific goal is I am losing 20 pounds by my birthday. So I know that I'm doing that and I have specific plan in place. I'll take you through examples as we go through because problem three is that most people don't have a plan to support the resolution that they make you know so they just say something 
and um, and then they're just kind of free flowing. So they have nothing to support um, this resolution. So let's go back to the running thing, right? So let's say um, uh, you set yourself a target for the week, right? So you say, I want to run for 10 minutes in week one. Then in week two, I'm going to run for 15 minutes. In week three, I'm going to run for 20 minutes and so on and so forth. Or for me with weight loss, my plan, I have a monthly goal. Uh, in month one, I want to lose eight pounds. In month two, I want to lose four pounds. I've actually set it out and planned it out, which takes me um, to problem number four, which is many resolutions are a bigger time commitment than people realize. And they don't realize um, how much time something's going to take and they get discouraged and they get somewhat overwhelmed by this. So the solution here is um, to break it up into time blocks and make it something that's realistic. So something like, I'm going to get organized. It's like, what does that mean? There are so many elements that I'm going to get organized. If you can reframe that and turn that into, I'm going to spend five minutes every day when I sit down at my desk, clearing the clutter before I start working. Boom. Okay. That is achievable and doable. And that's not some huge, massive, I'm going to get organized. I have to redo all my files. I have to, you know, I am a productivity coach, so I'm all about getting organized and I have by month, by week, here we go. And by day. So, you know, I have a whole system in place, but you can start with five minutes a day. Okay, problem number five. This is a big one. So many resolutions depend on going it alone without any support. And doing things alone is tough, okay? It's hard, my friend. We need accountability. We need motivation. We need support. We need someone to celebrate our successes with us. And we need someone to chivy us along when we're at a low point. So, you know, get a friend to do something with you if you want to, you know, get healthy, if you want to eat better, if you want to quit smoking, if you want to start going to the gym and exercising. Well, we can't go to the gym in lockdown, but you know what I'm saying. Go and take your daily walk. I got an Apple Watch um, for Christmas and from January, I have a streak of closing all my loops. So I have, you know, this is keeping me accountable. It's telling me, um, you know, when there are all sorts of ways. And I have an amazing Facebook group called Female Entre Entrepreneurs Craving Time and Financial Freedom. And if you can't find any other account of, uh, kind of accountability, I will put the link to that in this uh, vlog as well. And that will provide accountability for you where we can celebrate your success and we, we can cheer you on. But you need to find someone who's going to support you. Okay, there are lots of groups on Facebook if you don't want to join mine that are really specific to whatever it is that you're doing. But go out and find some accountability and that's going to help support you to make your resolution happen. Okay, number six. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. Okay, a lot of resolutions fail because people just give up too easily. All right, they're like... You know, this is hard. This is work. I don't want to do this. It seems like too big. Oh my God. Did I say I was going to lose 20 pounds? <sighs> <I don't... laughs> Listen, you have to set benchmarks and milestones along the way in order to um, keep your motivation going. So um, with the running, you know, I'm going to hit uh, 10 minutes this week with the weight loss. I'm going to lose eight pounds this month. I'm going to lose four pounds this month. Whatever it is, then you need to set yourself a benchmark so that you know exactly where you're going. And that way, you'll be able to motivate yourself and you'll be able to get excited. Okay, number seven, last one. I love this one. Most resolutions don't succeed because people are just too hard on themselves. Okay, they always see the negative instead of seeing the positive. 
And the solution to this is to celebrate your achievements and don't focus on what you did not do correctly. So let's go back to this exercising example. Let's say you set yourself a goal of exercising three times a week and you have exercised two times a week. Now you can look at this as a fail. Oh, I haven't achieved my goals. I haven't achieved my target. I told myself that I was gonna exercise on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I've only been doing Monday and Wednesday. I haven't been doing Friday. What you need to do is reframe this. I have exercised two times a week, whereas before I exercised zero times a week. In my book, that is a hurrah. Yeah, well done. Okay, that is success. That is something to celebrate. That's something to celebrate with your accountability buddy. That's something to celebrate in the Facebook group. It's something to celebrate, all right? You need to reframe that and you need to look at that as a success. This is a win. You are winning, my friend. Okay, you are winning. You are not failing, you are winning. And that is how you need to go forward. Okay, so I have put together a, um, a cheat sheet with all of these problems and all these solutions for you. And if you uh, check out the vlog this week where there's a link to, I go through all of these in a lot more detail so you can, you know, really dig deep and reframe those resolutions because I want to see you sticking to your goals. I want to see you achieving success and I want to see you get big things in 2021. Okay, 2021 is our chance to make things happen. 2020 was a washout for all of us, okay? 2021 is your year, and I wanna see you make it happen, and you need to start by setting the right foundations. And I know you can do this, I know you have this. Okay, I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.